In the United States, Fed Chair Jay Powell has been talking policy again, this time about eventually raising interest rates to levels where they begin to restrain economic growth. Interest rates are still accommodative, but we're gradually moving to a place where they will be neutral. Not that they'll be restraining the economy. We may go past neutral, but we're a long way from neutral at this point, probably. Joining us now, Guy Monson, senior partner and CIO at Saracen and Partners. Uh, Guy, uh, very good to see you. Very good morning to you. I want to start. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, we'll return to Danska in a moment, but let's talk about the big picture uh, with regards to the U.S. Because we heard from Powell there. One quote that really caught my eye, he said, there's no reason to think that this cycle can't continue for quite some time, effectively indefinitely. Which sounds like incredibly positive language. Uh, a little too punchy for you? A little too punchy for me. I think... What we're looking at is an extraordinary economic experiment by the Trump White House. We have really never seen, outside of wartime, a late cycle stimulus of this magnitude. Nine years into what is now a robust recovery, you're injecting fiscal stimulus on a scale never experienced before. Mm. It is hardly surprising that the Achilles heel of that strategy is probably the bond markets. Yes, yes, indeed, the, the, the bond markets. The, the, this is a really interesting dynamic, isn't it? But, and I want to show you this chart, which compares soft data against hard data. And this shows, the top part of this chart shows that the soft data has been outperforming the hard data. And I mention this because the market got very excited yesterday about ADP and ISM, yeah. services side. And some of that is soft data. And others have been pointing out, hang on a second, wait for the hard data, because we don't really know if this soft data has told us anything material that we didn't know before. And that was what moved the bond markets, wasn't it? So how much do we think this bond market move is overdone, I suppose, is the question. I, I don't think it is. I mean, we're going to see a little bit of natural weakness with the bond market rising in housing and auto, so we've seen that already. But look at some of the longer-term hard data. The um, uh, consumer confidence numbers, an 18-year high. You look at the small business optimism index. That's at a 40-year high. And American businessmen are saying, small business saying, we have never been more optimistic in almost half a century mm. than we are under Mr. Trump's White House policy. So these numbers are extremely robust. Now, we'll see more in the data now, in the hard, da in the hard data for the employment numbers. But if we get a 3.8% read on unemployment, that is a near 50-year low. So yeah. we're, we're just busting all the records. 1969, I think, yeah, the last time we would have seen unemployment that low. So Gundlach is calling 3.2, well, he called, sorry, 3.25% on the 30-year a game changer. We went through that on the 30-year yesterday. So, so this has been a game changer, do you think? Do we, are we going to start reassessing inflation expectations out into the future then from here? I think as long as the backup in bond yields is gradual, I'm afraid it just continues relentlessly. And I'm much happier with a 4% target than a 3.5% target. I think to reverse the effects of this massive stimulus, you're going to need quite an aggressive move at the long end. Compounding the problem, and if i have been advising a, uh, uh, the Oval Office, I'd have said don't impose don't embark on a campaign against Iran at the same time as you're embarking on experimental monetary policy. Because, mm. of course, you've got oil prices feeding into this as well, which is exaggerating the effect. So I think it's Trump versus the bond market. And this playbook's got some long way to go.